Hello YouTube, welcome to my workshop bench. Today, I have something special. A 2 terabyte hard drive for the file server. Now, I, I, I bet a lot of you are uh, looking at this and seeing Toshiba. What? Yes, Toshiba makes 3.5 inch hard drives now. I don't think they did for a while. I, the only thing I can remember them doing is possibly teaming up with Fujitsu and doing it. I think they might have done that for notebook hard drives, but I don't know much about the three and a half inch hard drives uh, that uh, they released. But these hard drives have an interesting story behind them. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are pretty aware of Western Digital and Seagate. I know a lot of you guys like both of those people, uh, or both of those companies. This tosh these Toshiba drives are interesting. I've used Hitachi drives for the past uh, couple years. Hitachi Desk Stars. This was all before the Western Digital buyout, which I'll tell you about in a minute. Uh, Hitachi Desk Stars I've generally really liked. They've been uh, highly regarded server hard drives, especially the Ultra Stars. Uh, and I've had really good luck with them, and I really like them. And that's why I chose the Toshiba drive, because this Toshiba drive is a Hitachi Desk Star in disguise, and I'll explain why. In 2012, uh, the hard drive market was just going nuts. You know, hard drives were astronomically expensive because of the Thailand floods, and hard drive companies, uh, there's a lot of company exchange going on. Uh, Seagate bought Samsung's hard drive division, so the Samsung Spinpoint hard drives are now basically Seagate drives. Uh, Western Digital bought out Hitachi's hard drive division, so now the the Hitachi brand of hard drives, HGST now, is a West are Western Digital drives. And in that transaction between uh, Western Digital and Hitachi, the Hitachi tooling got sold to Toshiba. So that is why this Toshiba drive is a Hitachi Desk Star or Ultra Star, not sure which, uh, in disguise, probably Desk Star. Uh, so there you have it. They Toshiba has Hitachi's old hard drive tooling, and those Hitachi drives before the Western Digital buyout, before 2012, basically, were uh, very, very good drives. I've I have three of them, and all three of them have been extremely reliable, and they've been just as fast as Western Digital Caviar Black drives have been. So there you have it. So that's why I chose this particular Toshiba drive. So for those of you who really liked the Hitachi Desk Starline. From before the West, bef from before all these companies consolidated, these are the drives to get because these are Hitachi Desk Stars, and I'll show you that in a second. Just by looking at it, you can kind of tell if you've used Hitachi drives before. So for the server, I decided to get a two terabyte drive. Uh, they do offer three terabyte versions of these, but unfortunately, the Super Micro board in my server is is a socket seven seven five board with a just regular plain old BIOS. And drives above two terabytes, you need UEFI for. Uh, if you don't want to split it up into partitions, and I don't prefer to split these drives up into partitions, so I just went with a two terabyte drive because that's the highest that will work with that board. Eventually, all the drives are going to be these two terabyte drives. So, let's take a look at the drive and what it has to offer in the side of it. Intelligent serial ATA interface. Perpendicular recording, tunnel magnetoresistive recording head technology. Ooh, fancy. Native command queuing. Here's something you don't see often: compatibility. Windows XP, Windows Vista, or Windows 7, Mac OS 10, and Linux. It actually says Linux on the box. <laughs> that you don't see very often. It also has these down there. So there you have it. Internal shock sensor and ramp loading technology to help protect your drive. Professional installation recommended. Well, I have an A plus certificate, so I would say that I'm professional enough to do this. <laughs> More than enough. Okay. So, let's take a look at this drive. Those of you who know Hitachi drives well will definitely recognize this. Now, one thing I have to say to Toshiba is if you're going to get these drives, get the retail packaging because look at all this foam <laughs> they package these drives extremely well yeah look at all this foam this is incredible <laughs> Toshiba does a great job of packaging these drives 
Now the first thing, for those of you who use Hitachis, you'll recognize is the bag. That hard drive bag is exactly the same as uh, the Hitachis ones were. The only difference is there's a Toshiba sticker on it. This is one thing that might worry some people, made in China, but I assure you it's okay. The tooling is from Hitachi. It's only made in China with Hitachi's tooling, so it really is not a big deal. This is also an advanced format hard drive, so it uses the 4K uh, sector thing. So, there you have it. Let's take a look at the drive itself. Loud noises. But, anyway, just by looking at this, any of you who've used Hitachi, you can tell that this is a Hitachi. If you look at these screws here and this little, and this little breathing hole here, the whole top plate is exactly the same as Hitachi Desk Stars were before the Western Digital buyout. So this is where the tooling went. The tooling went to Toshiba. Even the bottom looks the same. That ribbon cable, the board, it's all the same. And these drives even have Hitachi part numbers. So, there you have it. And I've had good luck with Hitachi Desk Stars, so that's why I'm, I'm sticking with these. Plus, these are, this drive, this 2 terabyte drive was $105 in the retail packaging to the door. Western Digital is still charging like $184 for uh, a Caviar Black 2 terabyte. So, you know, forget you, Western Digital. I'll take the cheaper one that's just as reliable. <laughs> so, there you have it. Just thought I'd share this. I just thought I'd just comment on these drives because they're, uh, it's very interesting as to how, uh, how Toshiba ended up with Hitachi's uh, tooling. And also, just so, so those of you are aware that these drives are safe because they're basically Hitachi. So, time to do some data migration. Oh boy. Well, it's been a couple weeks, and not only did I get the IO Shield for that uh, for my server motherboard, but we're going to put this drive into the server, and I'm going to show you how I migrate data from drive to drive. We're going to do that, and first things first, got to shut the server off. So I can pull it out, and then I gotta figure out which drives are which. That's gonna be fun. <laughs> All right, I got the IO shield in my server board. Oh yeah, look at that. It was so brand new, I had to punch out like all the holes in the sound. I had to punch out the holes for the, for basically HDMI, all this stuff. I had to move some of the uh, the things back that. Uh, touch the top or the sides in this case of the PS2 connectors for grounding yeah by all accounts it's brand new which is pretty cool so now to move on to data migration this is what I have in the machine right now I have an Intel six, uh, 40 gigabyte SSD as the boot drive that's not going to change for quite a long time and I have three one terabyte drives now one of these is going to get upgraded to a two terabyte now I just got to figure out which one uh, the drive I want, I have backups of stuff from years ago on one of these drives, and that's the drive I'm going to migrate over to, I think. So, let's get on with it. Man, I tell you what, it's a pain in the ass to get the drive cages out of this machine, but I did it. Now here's the new hard drive. It's a Toshiba 2TB drive. And as I've gone over before, these are underneath the hood Hitachis because Toshiba inherited Hitachi's tooling back in 2012 uh, during the whole hard drive buyout merger thing that went on back then when hard drives were ridiculously expensive. So this, for all intents and purposes, is a Hitachi Desk Star from that era. So, let's put this in there. Alright, this is all buttoned back up. So now you can see my drives more clearly. You can notice that the two other drives have jumper uh, things here, where the Toshiba drive here only has two little things, only has two pins, small pins right there. And the SSD has no jumper pins at all. So, yeah, there you have it. The top drive is the two terabyte drive. Slowly I'll migrate these two over to two terabyte drives as well. This is the drive that's been in the server for 
say close to two years now. It's a one terabyte Western Digital Caviar Black from um, September of 2010, so it's about three years old now, and it's held up very well. Western Digital Black, Western Digital Caviar Black drives. I've had really good luck with these things. Last forever, and they're very reliable. I've had one have like one bad sector after after a year, but I think that was just you know one derp bad sector or something like that. Just a little hiccup, but that's really the only issue I've had with the Western Digital Black drives. With drives older than that, I've had them die from a bunch of bad sectors, but that's because they were abused. So, I think we should get started with the data migration. So I'll just put this drive over here, plug everything back in. I'll leave the SSD unplugged, actually, and just plug in the drives. So, so this is the most professional-looking uh, drive migration I've ever seen. I have this drive on the floor, which, by the way, is a is a painted concrete floor. And I uh, have the Toshiba drive in there. So what I'm going to do is boot up CloneZilla off of this very amusingly small CD. Well, it turns out I can't clone the disks because uh, I had it work before. I don't know what happened now, but the uh, the sectors, since the sectors are different between this one and the Toshiba, the Toshiba is an advanced format drive, so it uses 4K sectors. This one's an old, the old traditional format, so it doesn't. So I got to figure out how to fix that. Uh, so I'm just going to format the drive and copy files to it. <laughs> I'm booting up a Linux Mint CD right now to fix that problem. So, yeah, that was three hours wasted for nothing. Let's do something that actually works this time. Okay, so buttoned it all up. I forgot to film because I'm an idiot. But I'll recap what I did basically. Uh, first, I tried using Clonezilla to uh, clone the drives over. That didn't work because I forgot to select a certain option, which was to uh, uh, just scale the. Uh, the partition table proportionally. You know, I thought that would work, but I thought that would cause problems, but apparently that's exactly what I needed to do. So instead, I took a Linux Live CD, formatted the 2 terabyte drive, uh, tried to copy files with the Live CD and had permissions problems, so I booted up into the install of Debian that was on the and on the SSD there and uh, copied the files from from the uh, from one drive to another manually. I literally just selected all the files in one drive and dragged them to another. It was as simple as that. And that worked. Formatted it as ext3 because ext4 apparently has still to this day has file corruption issues every once in a while. So I still use ext3. Not like it matters because the performance doesn't really catch up with my networking anyway. So there you have it. Yeah, that was. I wasted three hours waiting for uh, that disk to clone when, in all reality, I should have just dragged the files over. It was actually quicker to do it that way. So, this Toshiba drive is successfully installed. It has no bad sectors, and there's nothing wrong with it so far, and it seems very. and it sounds like a Hitachi drive to me. So, the tooling in it is all Hitachi. I mean, I have. there's articles to back that up, but I, <laughs> I wanted to see for myself whether that was true, and that seems to be the case. So, there you have it, guys. Upgraded the file server to a 2 terabyte drive. I plan to migrate both of the other drives to 2 terabyte drives as well, so that I have a 6 terabyte file server. So I can ba And the main reason I'm doing this is so I can back up a lot of the videos I make for you guys. The raw footage off of my phone and off of the cameras and stuff, it, it, once, once I start doing HD, it really eats space up pretty quick. So, I needed a place to back all that stuff up. Eventually, I need to get a bigger drive for my main machine, but I figured I'd start with the server since I I need to off-log stuff off of my main main computer anyway. So there you have it. I'm gonna be slowly migrating this to two terabyte drives, and you know there you have it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Have a good one, everybody. Ciao.